Uh, oh. Joining us now is a man who has done a lot for the state of West Virginia. He is the 34th Attorney General of the great state of West Virginia. If you recall, West Virginia decided to leave Virginia back in the day when there was a uh, certain uh -huh. battle going sure. on. Okay. And it is a glorious and a beautiful state that had a basketball player going through a situation with the NCAA due to uh, the amount of transfers and the reasoning and a waiver. So this Attorney General, led uh, by an Ohio coalition, decided to sue the NCAA. Now there's a temporary restraining order on the injunction from the NCAA to these players who are not allowed to play for two weeks. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of it, and I have no idea if what I just said accurately described what's going on. <laughs> Sounded right. To clarify it all, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Attorney General of West Virginia, Patrick Morrissey. Yeah! yeah! Morrissey! Hey, Pat, Pat, it's good to be with you today, and it's a great day to be a mountaineer. Hey, you're damn right, no matter where you are, or no matter where you may be, the... Uh, you look sweet. Are those real books behind you? I assume they are your attorney general. <laughs> They're actually real books. It's a, it's a library. We even try to use these books from time to time, and perhaps they helped a little bit yesterday. Okay, so let's talk about yesterday. Shout out to those books, bud. Hey, shout out to those uh, books. Yeah, Keep out. going, books. Okay, so let's talk about yesterday. I just tried to describe the situation. Obviously, everybody seemingly with a brain and common sense is fed up with the NCAA sticking their nose into a situation with archaic rules in the modern era that we're in. Raekwon Battle, a basketball player for West Virginia, is not allowed to play this year. It was deemed not allowed to play because he had too many transfers without a waiver, and it wasn't found out until he got to West Virginia that that was the case, so he's kind of in a bad spot. So you all sue the NCAA, basically saying, saying you're not allowed to do that because of potential wages being earned with the new NIL situation. Am I describing that right? Where are we? Yes. And why did you guys decide to do what you did? And what does this mean for the future, not just the next two weeks? Absolutely. So first of all, thank you for having me on because this is an important issue for the future of college athletics. I think a lot of us have been very worried about having this unaccountable organization issue these dictates from on high and really not putting the student athletes first. So that's one of the reasons why up front, you know, I wrote a letter to the NCAA originally asking for Raekwon Battle oh, uh, to be allowed to play this year. That was the first thing that we did. And then we got a letter, you know, from the NCAA saying, sorry, but we're not going to approve it. We followed up with another letter. Raekwon and his attorneys followed up and sent letters. But at the end of the day, Raekwon was denied. And interestingly, the more we started to look at that fact pattern, we saw that some people were approved, some people were denied. And then we start to say, look, the NCAA is operating on top of a house of cards and that they think they're unaccountable, but they too have to comply with the antitrust laws of our country, the competition laws that governs uh, when businesses, how businesses behave, how individuals can uh, transit and move on to receive the type of employment or athletic opportunities of their choice. And what we saw here is that the NCAA, we thought was violating the antitrust laws. So I started talking with the Ohio Attorney General, Dave Yost, did a really good job organizing a coalition of seven states. We went into court in the Northern District of West Virginia yesterday. The judge indicated that he was gonna put a halt to the NCAA transfer rule for the two-time transfers at a minimum for 14 days. So from my perspective, that means that all of the athletes that have been denied for this time, there is a clear pathway to allow them to play and to allow them play without penalty. That's the other issue, Pat, that we were very worried about, that you could have a victory in court, but the NCAA could come back and say, yeah, you might have won in court, but it got reversed. Now we're going to strip away the wins for your school. We're going to stop the individual record keeping, You know, all the awards that you may want to get. I think the court is weighed in pretty clearly that the NCAA doesn't have that power. And now we move forward in the court. But student athletes, for the first time in a long time, have been put first by this big multi-state coalition. Hey, thank you for doing that. We obviously appreciate that as former athletes and people that have questioned a lot of the of what the NCAA has done for a very long time. What's the goal of this? Obviously, 14 days from the judge in West Virginia. The goal is just that this transfer rule gets kind of eliminated, and how would that go about? The NCAA would have to represent themselves in court, and a judge would say, you have to eliminate this rule, or what are we looking at yeah. here, especially with a you know law world that takes forever to do anything? Thing, right? Isn't that Absolutely. Kind of, yeah. 
So, so the good news is that the court has already issued a temporary restraining order. Yep. So they're basically trying to immunize these athletes for a minimum of a 14-day period. But then we're back in court on December 27th, the end of the year, and then we're going to be asking for a permanent injunction. The value of that is to send this transfer eligibility rule into the scrap heap. And then obviously the NCAA is going to have to come up with rules that are not so onerous on the student athletes. I think one of the problems the NCAA has run into is they've lost their way. They're not focusing on the student athlete. I've always made the example of why does a student athlete have to wait for a year when you're a coach, you could leave midway through. You could be in a band. You could transfer schools and you're not going to have to wait a year. Yeah. It's an absurd rule. It never was sustained under the antitrust rules. It's not logical. And the NCAA has been interpreting it every which way uh, but reasonably over the past uh, number of years. We want to put that to bed right now. Yeah. We're in the middle of the college sports season, winter sports. People want to go out on a hardwood. They want to play ball. Let the kids play. That's what we want. And then there'll obviously be an opportunity for the NCAA working with the states to come up with a better system. Let the kids play. Let, yep. let the, the boys, boys play. And, and girls play. Let them play, play man. Girl, yeah, let the kids play. Let the kids let play. Let the kids play. It's all about the student human athletes. And I don't think it's sit out a year anymore. I think they change that. But if you transfer more than one time without a waiver, then you're stuck in a place forever. I mean, it's just like the rules are stupid. They all seem to be hypocritical. And I appreciate the fact that you say that they're not focusing. They've lost their way. They're not focusing on the student human athletes, which used to be their entire mission. Now it's like they're focusing on showcasing that they still have power. And it's like, hey, don't need that from you. What we need is you to kind of take care of the entire situation while we're in the middle of this wild transition in the NIL era. Let's put some guardrails on this thing as opposed to utilizing rules that were built before this started to ruin people's lives. None of it makes sense. That whole earned wages and future wages thing brings in a whole nother angle, right? Doesn't that kind of bring in a whole nother angle yeah, at the NCAA? No, it it does, because at the essence, the antitrust laws, you're engaging in restrictive trade. You're actually limiting economic opportunities for people. And athletes are citizens, too. And look, Pat, you know this. The fact is that any athlete could have a perfect moment in time. It could be throwing the right pass. It could be uh, shooting, defending the right play. And you don't know when it's going to come. And to actually say artificially, for no logical reason, you're going to bar someone from playing for a year, that's not right. That's what the court said in the order that came out yesterday. So I think the clear intent of this district court is to go forward and we're very hopeful. We're gonna humbly go back to the court and ask to extend this TRO to make it more permanent. But I think it's a good day if you're a student athlete because now we get to bring more accountability to the NCAA. Hell yeah, we've been looking for this for a long mm -hmm. time. Do I just call you AG or what, 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 are, we, uh, what, are, the, what are the boys call you back here? You could call me the AG. You could call me anything you want, oh, geez, but just geez. call us winners in the court. Hi and we keep court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that AG. You're a dog, bro. Uh, Raekwon Battle <laughs> in his first game or second game could go for 40 points and become a household name uh, overnight. And then all of a sudden, well, he wouldn't have had that opportunity. But nowadays, maybe he gets some sponsorship out of that. Maybe he gets to earn a living. Well, maybe he gets to change his family's tree trajectory forever because of that evening well, that, and the NCAA says that's, nah that's, that's right point and look here's the really important part anyone want to see a really good kid uh, he testified for 40 minutes yesterday in court and I think he was one of the stars of the show but he talked about his compelling story here's a guy that grew up he was on a reservation his coach left and he decided to go to WVU. You know, you guys know Josh Eiler had spent time on a reservation as well. So there was a comfort level. This is the right place for this kid who's trying to address some of his mental health needs. That's the exact type of example you would think the NCAA would say, let's have basic rules of fairness, let the kid play. But they didn't. And now you're seeing what happens when Entities are unaccountable, think they can get away with this. I love that. Did the NCAA have a representative there saying, no, I, after his 45 minutes, they say, I was like, I'll take the stand for myself, actually. You know, I'll be like uh, Vin Diesel in the Find Me <laughs> Find Me Guilty movie or nice. whatever, where he represents. Well, look, I, 
you know, one of the interesting things about the hearing is that they were talking about, well, um, are you going to play this year? Because ultimately the decisions should be up to the student athlete as to what's going to happen. You know, a lot of questions uh, are coming up about eligibility and would you forfeit it? At the end of the day, it's a decision that the school has to make, but also the kid has to make it as well. But the line of questioning was literally focused on, well, um, NIL and do you really have to go play this year? You've missed uh, 10 games. You only have 18 games left. Look, it should be up to the That's kid the to That's the NCAA, decide. though. The NCAA is there saying, we don't want this kid. They like put. They sent somebody to court in West Virginia to be like, hey, make sure this dude isn't able to play. And that lawyer's like, you got it. I'm going in there. That's what that's what the NCAA did in this court case. Like, what was the other side? Was it just a judge ruling this certain thing? Who who you no, so the, obviously it's a it's a case that everyone at counsel and I'm not gonna disparage anyone counsel, but what I will say is that when the focus is always on, well, they're not looking for the best interest of the kid. They're not trying to get to the heart of the story about how this kid was affected. He's got a really compelling story if you look into it. And he's got a posting on uh, Twitter if you go look at that, which really, if anyone across the country watches it, they're going to become a fan of this kid. I just would hope that the NCAA would be trying to get to the bottom of it. Why did this kid transfer? What's going on? What makes him tick? How can we put his interest ahead? That didn't come across yesterday uh, in the hearing when the NCAA was asking the questions. And I think it needs to come across in the future for the NCAA to get it right. Otherwise, look, there should be a lot of scrutiny of a monopoly type organization. They don't have exemptions from the antitrust rules. And that's what state attorneys general and others are all about. No one is above the law. Man, I love that. Hey. Patrick, hell yeah, dude. Right, we're going. Go ahead, AJ. Sorry I took that. I was very uh, intrigued by this entire thing. Just the thought optically of the NCAA sending in two lawyers after a 45-minute testimony of a student human athlete telling his, his – bearing his soul pretty much yeah. about what sports mean to him, what the head coach of this team, and the NCAA going, to rest our case, Judge, this kid doesn't deserve to play. Like, you look like the biggest – group of assholes mm -hmm. on earth and it's like why is that what the ncaa is why is that you know it doesn't make just doesn't make any sense but go ahead aj sorry about that do we know no, listen uh, I, I think that yeah. this was step one there are multiple steps you know this is one round of a multi-round process so i think the judge did a good job we're not presuming anything we have 14 days we think we're correct on the law we're very pleased the court is considering all of our arguments uh, but we're going to have to go back. We have December 27th, and we're going to keep going. And I think we're correct on the law, and we're going to keep humbly going to the court and asking them to do the right thing. Hell yeah, humbly, of course. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, AJ. How many people are making these decisions in the, in the NCAA? Is there a group? Is there a board? Like, Do we know who is ultimately pulling the trigger and making these decisions that are affecting all of these people's lives? Yeah, I mean, they have a designated committee of people that review these, and it's my understanding it came out yesterday. There are probably about 100 student athletes nationally that are impacted by all this. And uh, obviously, this is just one touchstone, by the way, of, I think, a lot of concerns with the NCAA. And note that they have this for the Division I athletes, but you don't have the same rules in place for everyone. Uh, but you have a limited group of people. And I'm still hopeful, look, that the NCAA will come to its senses and do the right thing. Let the kids play. Yeah. Even now, I want to note that even today, there's some people questioning, well, will there be potential punishment if they go out and play? Would they potentially lose another year of eligibility if this issue gets reversed? And guys, as you know, this is one step in a multi-step system. We don't know what will happen. While we think we're correct on the law, what happens if something changes? I don't think the athletes should be punished. That's why it was particularly important for the court to say that that old restitution law, think of it as the NCAA penalty box provision, that that was not going to apply here. We have to make sure that that stays in place. Just the NCAA petitioning against a kid in court while he's burying his soul. Kid. A kid yeah. You look soulless. <laughs> yes. But then to follow it up with, we dare you. Those are rules right now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We'll see what happens December 27th. Okay, so is this all worth it or not? It's just like, you look like the, that's not what you should be. We all agree with that. We also all agree that we appreciate the hell out of you, uh, AG. Good luck December 27th, and kind of thank you for spearheading this movement alongside whoever it was in Ohio over there.
Dave Yost of Ohio did a great job. And it was a bipartisan coalition, seven states. I appreciate all my colleagues. We all work together on this. But shout out to Dave Yost of Ohio. Did a great job. Bipartisan. How many more we think are going to get involved once they hear about this? Probably everybody, right? Look, I mean, there may be more that come in. Look, how often do you see the states of New York, Ohio, West Virginia, Colorado, North Carolina, Tennessee, all come together under one umbrella and take on a common foe. I think that's a reflection of the fact that like this is an thing. issue that has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with fairness for the kids and letting people play and earn resources as they can too. Can we get a good pop, a good baby face pop from this? What, what, what's going on? Ah, uh, they're screwing kids. Yeah, we're in. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, we're, we're, sure. we're in. Uh, hey, what's your political party? Who cares? What, what, what can we take a stand on right now? Uh, we're helping people that might not come from much. Uh, make money that they would have never been able to see before, but a group is holding them back from that. Everybody hates well, this group. Pretty much. Okay, yeah, I'm in. Well, I'm in. That's going to be um, And look, Pat, imagine you have a kid that was on a reservation, right? And so how many uh, people, Native Americans, are actually playing in the NCAA right now? How many are playing in pro sports? So you have this kid, the NCAA talks about diversity, what they're trying to do, and then this waiver gets denied. I think it's a bad look. I think they made the wrong decision. We wrote them multiple times suggesting that, uh, but they went ahead. Now uh, we're in court and we're going to let our, our briefs do the talking. But I like our position where we are. I think we're on the side of the angels and we're going to keep going. Hey, let's keep reading those books behind us. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and let's win this thing on the 27th. Mm -hmm. on, let's AG. put this one to bed. You said there's going to be multiple rounds. How about a second round knockout Boom. Yeah, in yeah. December 27th? That'd be great. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. Thank yeah. you.